it's so f***ed up and sell it to their friends. It is so crooked. Charges this company with creating and preserving wealth. $40 billion, the gambling public. <laughs> I mean, this is beyond disgusting. You can't, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. What's going on, guys? This story, <laughs> what's going on, guys? This story was actually even hard for me to believe. It's so f***ed up. It is so crooked. It is so transparently crooked that none of it makes any sense. Actually, it makes too much sense, too much dollars and cents. And it really demonstrates so clearly, so clearly how crooked some of these people are. Okay, so the witness who gave a testimony against Scam Sam at the sentencing, he said that FTX was going to unload, going to unload money, the estate, and sell it to their friends. So yesterday, Bloomberg reports that FTX estate offloaded as much as 30 million. 30 million Solana crypto tokens, selling them at a stupidly low price of $64, $64. It's currently cruising at around $180, give or take. Nonetheless, $64 sold to Pantera Capital and Galaxy Trading. Galaxy Trading is under the umbrella of Galaxy Digital. Galaxy Digital is controlled by Mike Novogratz. Mike Novogratz was assigned by the FTX estate. No joke. He was assigned by the FTX estate as an investment advisor, all part of their digital assets management and monetization program. When this was happening, according to the FTX estate, this is all to ensure that Novogratz and of course Galaxy Digital would be in charge of ensuring with creating and preserving value of all the cryptocurrencies. Asset management, but, <laughs> but how convenient that FTX estate turns around, charges this company with creating and preserving wealth, buys up these assets, absolutely privileged position to be on the inside, and a company under the umbrella of Galaxy Digital gets to buy, gets to buy all this stuff at a 62% discount. You can't make this stuff up. This is so crooked. It is such a slap in the face of any decent human being. And honestly, this crookery is found left and right wherever the hell we see. Wherever we look, we see this level of crookery, this level of insider favors, 62% off. Insanity. The cozy transaction is going to fetch the FTX estate $1.9 billion, supposedly to repay the customers, of course, in dollar amounts, not in the crypto amount, even though there is an insane abundance of conflict of interest all of which would violate the bankruptcy codes. Supposedly in the deal, the Solana crypto tokens would be locked up for four years and can't be sold by Galaxy Trading. So Mike Novogratz, an old big Wall Street guy, that's how they work. I mean, this is beyond disgusting. You can't, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. It's so crooked. This is like a really bad movie and everything is out in the open for the common person to see. They're not even trying to hide it. Couldn't they just set up a shell company, multiple shell companies, at least to try to hide it? This is seriously disgusting. Anyways, on the positive side, a jury found Do Kwon guilty, guilty of defrauding, well, customers, guilty of defrauding investors who lost billions, up to 40 billion, in the whole Terra Luna collapse in 2022. This was, of course, before FTX. So the wording is super interesting for this trial. They were found to have deceived investors about the stability of the crypto asset security and the so-called algorithmic stablecoin tied to the US dollar, that being Terra USD. So they were found guilty of deceiving investors by claiming whatever function of the crypto coin, which is super interesting because then they can go after anyone who claims XYZ over any kind of crypto asset, any kind of crypto function that their token claims to bring to the masses. So it's very, very interesting. Of course, the SEC though is late to the game, late to the party, probably because they were totally bought out, maybe by Scam Sam and others in the crypto sphere. Because just like I said, people like Mike Novogratz screwing, literally screwing the FTX estate, former Wall Street guy, screwing customers all out in the open all allowed, totally allowed. That's why once in a while I say that cryptocurrency is a form of wealth transfer, mainly <laughs> professionals. The professionals that worked on Wall Street, they all jumped in on the bandwagon. And the regulators who are supposed to be taking care of customers, well, they're in bed. 
They're in bed with each other. But of course, the SEC now, now they just blame that the crypto companies are not in compliance. It's their fault, which may be they're not in compliance. But the funny thing is them being not in compliance allows others, allows others, such as the example of Mike Novogratz and digital holdings to accumulate wealth, wealth transfer. So allowing certain companies not in compliance basically allows allows the financial professionals to come in, sweep up, sweep up the mess, and of course, claim the rewards. This guy, unfortunately, was not in the US for the trial. He's being held in Montenegro, where he was caught with fake passports, and the US has tried to extradite him along with South Korea. Montenegro denied the extradition to the US, so the trial went ahead without him. The SEC released a verdict press release on Friday, they emphasize that the verdict holds both parties accountable, both parties being the company and Duquan, for the massive crypto fraud that caused devastating losses for investors resulted in roughly $40 billion kaput overnight. Interestingly enough, it does say that SEC has yet to obtain any penalties or even injunctions against Terraform Labs. But these guys are not backing down. Terraform spokesperson rejected the verdict and the premise of the lawsuit saying that SEC does not have the legal authority to bring this case at all, which is pretty interesting. Of course, they will appeal nonetheless. It's pretty interesting. I would have covered the trial in detail had he been there because, well, he's a crook and I totally lost money on Terra Luna would have been nice to cover. Anyways, previously, the company Terraform Labs and Do Kwon himself were found to have unlawfully offered and sold crypto asset securities in violation of the Registration Provisions and Securities Act of 1933. But this trial was in essence to find them liable for the massive crypto fraud that it totally was. <laughs> Anyways, the SEC finishes their press release by saying that for all of crypto's promises, the lack of registration and compliance has real consequences for real people. See, it's blaming those bringing the crypto to the masses. Their last line says, as the hard work of our team shows, we will continue to use the tools at our disposal to protect the investing public, the gambling public, <laughs> but it is high time for the crypto markets to come into compliance. Well, we've all seen the cozy, cozy relationships all over the place in plain sight. These people don't care about customers that's for sure honestly everyone everyone is on their own it truly is the wild west there's no way that i would trust anyone to come and rescue me or anyone else of course unless they're going to pick up some dough funny enough the statement released by sec of do Kwan and terraform was made by the director of the division of enforcement the director gerber gruwal the same guy who issued the crazy apology to the judge in Utah when the SEC attorneys were caught lying. They were caught lying and trapping a company out of Utah. I made a video about that too. So all these guys are definitely not little angels looking out for customers. Not at all. Not one iota. So what's the moral of the story? Well, the guys in DC are in bed with the guys on Wall Street. And unfortunately, both groups control the most powerful monetary system on the planet, which is why the currency is so insanely devalued every single day. It's, it's sad, which is why it's important to know that we're definitely on our own. All right, guys, well, that's it for this one. Always a pleasure. Please don't forget to smash the like, subscribe if you haven't. See you in the next one.